Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing great. I hope you had an awesome Thursday. I can't believe it is already Thursday this week, but it is. Oh, wow. Anyway, tomorrow's Friday. And uh, my son gets to choose his education tomorrow. We have free day Friday. He does the same things, but he gets to choose what areas he wants to work on. So anyway, I'll look forward to that. Tonight, I'm going to do Psalms 22 with you. September 23rd. This year is flying by. So today, my words were restoration. I just kind of thought about that this morning while I was in my quiet time mode with God. Just thought about restoration, that we all need restoration. So I'm going to pray and open us up. Then um, I'm going to read what the song that I shared. I'm going to read what I wrote about it. God, we just come to you and we just thank you. God, you are on your throne and you are in control. God, thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our shelter in the storm. Thank you for being our strength and our refuge. God, uh, you are magnificent and powerful and mighty and miraculous. God, you are always working. You are always doing something. God, you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. God, you are loving and caring and kind and compassionate. And you are patient, God. You want none to perish. Thank you, God, for loving us and calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would... <clears throat> that their eyes and their ears and their hearts would be open, God, that the Holy Spirit would draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We pray for them to see where they are, to remember the relationship that they had with you, to return, to repent, and to be reconciled again, God. We pray for all the many disasters that are going on, God. I, I can't keep up anymore. There's a shooting somewhere in Tennessee today at a Kroger. Just so many things going on at the same time. I just pray that you would be with all these people <clears throat> that seem to be... Oh, excuse me. Got to get a drink of water. that seem to be getting hit with disaster, God, right and left. We just pray that you would be with them, that they would feel your presence, God, that you would send people to meet their needs that would be the hands and feet of Jesus and the love and the compassion of Jesus. God, we pray for people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. We just pray that they would feel your presence, God. We pray for truth. We pray for truth in this country, God. We pray for truth to rise above the lies, God. I pray for people, for your children to be strong, to be loud and proud, God, and to stand up against all the worldly values that we have been bombarded with. God, we just, uh, we just pray, God, that you would give us strength to stand up for truth to stand up for truth no matter what, because we are not standing before the world when all this is over with. We will stand before you. And if we just go with the way of the world and we just go with everything, then we are not standing on your truths. So God, we just pray for that. We pray for strength. We pray for boldness. We pray for um, endurance in this race, in this spiritual warfare that we face every day, God, we pray for strength. And uh, 
We also pray for restoration. God, today is day 11 and uh, restoration is what you laid on my heart. Rest restoration of relationships, restored relationships, restored health, restored prodigals. Prodigals would come home, restored faith, restored churches. Everything restored, God. Everything restored as it was new through Jesus, God. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I think I forgot some restored things, but I have them all here. Okay, so I'm going to... I'm going to read what I just wrote not too long ago on uh, Facebook. I was cold a while ago. Now I'm hot. I went and got me something to put over my t-shirt. Now I'm hot. You can't. It's just, it's crazy weather time. Okay. Day 11, restoration. Praying in our nation for restored relationships, restored morality. Restored unity, restored truth, restored faith, restored souls, restored health, restored prodigals, and for restoration of our republic, which is our country. Our country is a republic. We need restoration in so many areas. We do. We need Jesus so badly in our nation and all over the world, too. We need that, too. This is such a beautiful song and message, and it is so calming. It really is. The music is calming. The lyrics are calming. I really like this song, and I just I just happened to find it because I was looking for something about restoration. So um, I found that one. It is perfect for the feelings I have for the nation that we live in today compared to to the nation that I grew up in. Jesus is our only hope and peace in this broken and evil world. We must stand for truth and not the things and ideas of the world. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John three sixteen through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. I'm sorry. My throat is like, it is crazy. It is, um, I don't know. It sounds like I have a frog in it. All right. Well, let's uh, get into our scripture. Let's get into Psalm 22. I am not sure whether it goes with restoration or not, but we shall see. My daily verses lately have been a lot of Psalms and Proverbs. I really like that. Proverbs and Psalm. Psalms and Proverbs. Okay, Psalm 22. It's kind of longer than the others. The suffering praise and posterity of the Messiah to the chief musician set to the deer of dawn, a psalm of David. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? And from the words of my groaning, oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. And in the night season, and am not silent, but you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. All those who see me ridicule me. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. But you are he who took me out of the womb. You made me trust while on my mother's breast. I was cast upon you from birth, from my mother's womb. 
you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. They gape at me with their mouths like a raging and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It has melted within me. My strength is dried up like a pot's herd, and my tongue clings to my jaws and have brought me to the dust of death. For dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I, count, I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. Okay, well, we're going to talk about who he's talking about here. But you, O Lord, do not be far from me. O my strength, hasten to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. I will deliver your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all you offspring of Israel, for he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard, My praise shall be of you in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship, and those who go down to the dust shall bow before him, even he who cannot keep himself alive. A Posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation. They will come and declare his righteousness to a people who will be born, that he has done this. So, wow, that was a long one. But the good news is, well, I don't have much. I don't have much here on the study end of this. Hmm. That's weird. There was so much there. I thought I was going to have a lot, but I don't. I'll read what I have. The great messianic psalm is filled in Christ on the cross. The suffering of the victim is depicted. As the triumph of faith is portrayed, Jesus quoted this psalm of victory from the cross. Okay, so a lot of what he's talking about is Jesus. Uh, they pierced my hands and my feet. I count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. So that is Jesus that he is talking about. And as I was reading this, I was thinking, okay, this is us too. Because we go to God so brokenhearted, so cast down, so upset about something. And when we take the time to meet God, he shows us things about the situation that we don't see going in. And by the time we get out of our prayer time, we are rejoicing because God has shown us something that we didn't see in this situation. We go in like David, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know, 
I cry in the daytime. I cry at night. Why aren't you listening to me? Why aren't you doing something? You know, we do, we do that too. We do that too. It's been three years. Why hasn't something changed? You know, but what we forget a lot of times is that God's timing is perfect. And a lot of times when we think he's not working on anything, he is working. But this, this is about Jesus. And um, then he turns, he turns his... downcastness to praise. He's over here declaring and praising in the great assembly. So that's, I, I noticed that's how a lot of David's psalms are. He starts out, God, why are you forsaking me? Where are you? I am this, I am that. Can't you see me? Can't you see what I'm going through? We're the same. We're just like David. God knows what we're going through. He knows what we're going through before we hit our knees to pray. He knows. He knows every detail. He knows details that we don't know. He knows maybe the reason why he hasn't, you know, uh, answered our prayer in the time limit that we have allotted, which Wow, to a holy God, he should be able to take as much time as he wants. But we as people, we think in we think in time and we think, well, that's been enough time. Why hasn't that been done? But God's timing is perfect. And sometimes through us having to wait, he is putting something together that is even better than what we're praying for. So we just have to be patient and we have to trust. You know, he said he trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Okay, David trusts in the Lord. David has trusted in the Lord since he was a baby. Since David was born, he says, I have trusted in the Lord. And then over here, he's just, he's making all of his declarations. I will praise you, you who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him and fear him, all you offspring of Israel, for he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard. So he hears, he hears our prayers. He does hear our prayers. But sometimes it's not time. Sometimes it's no. Because sometimes it's protection. And then sometimes it's yes. Sometimes it's an immediate yes. I like those best. But sometimes it's no. Because God is protecting us. And he knows more about the situation than we do. And sometimes he says wait. Because it's just not time yet. Or maybe you're not ready. Maybe God wants to change something in our hearts to make it to where it will be better. Anyway, God is in control and he is on his throne. And never doubt that. Never that. Never doubt that he, you are not important to him. That he loves you and he cares for you. Even though he doesn't answer your prayers in the way that you want him answered. Know that he loves you and cares for you and has a plan and purpose for your life that you just can't even imagine. But you have to follow him. You have to follow him to get that perfect plan and purpose that he has for you. You have to follow Jesus. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with a life full of maybe regrets blessings missed people in your life missed anyway god knows and so tomorrow night we will read psalm 23 and i won't be here on saturday night because it is alumni night at the promise 
and me and the ladies that I have worked with for years, we're going to go to the promise. And you go, well, you went last weekend. I know I did. It was for youth night. I went for youth. I'm going this time with my friends and my former co-workers. And so I won't be here Saturday, but I'll be here tomorrow night. Pretty sure I'll be here tomorrow night. Okay, how do we want to do our salvation message tonight? And I'm sorry I was a little bit late. I had to write I had to write what I wanted to write. Restoration. Okay, we haven't done this in a while. This is your ticket to heaven. You see it says admit one. It says admit one because everybody gets the choice to accept Jesus or not. Other people cannot help you make this decision. They can't get you into heaven. We all have to decide. Your ticket to heaven. May I offer you a ticket to heaven? You don't have to pay for it. And that's a good thing because you could never afford to buy it. You couldn't. It's free, but only because someone has already paid the ultimate price for it. God loves you and not only wants you to have a fulfilling life on earth, he wants you to live with him in heaven forever. He's the one who offers you a paid in full ticket. No one wants to go to hell where there is no joy and no pleasures whatsoever. And God doesn't want anyone to go there either. The Bible says that God is not wishing that any should perish. 2 Peter 3, 9. But there is a problem with getting that free ticket. We have all done wrong. We have all sinned, haven't we? God's word says, if we say we have no sin... We deceive ourselves. 1 John 1, 8. Sin pollutes. It makes us unclean, unfit for God's presence in that wonderful, perfect place called heaven. Sin penalizes. It separates us from a sinless God. For the wages of sin is death. Romans six twenty three. In short, our sinfulness blocks the delivery of the ticket that we need to get into heaven. So who paid for it? Who paid for this ticket? There's good news. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to earth to be born and to live his life without sin. He suffered once for our sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, and that's all of us, that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter 3.18 When God laid on him the iniquity, the sins of us all, Isaiah 53, 6, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mark 15, 34. The answer is simple and profound. Jesus was separated from God because he took your place and mine on the cross. And by dying, he paid in full the wages our sins had earned. Then he rose from the dead, was seen by hundreds of people, and is alive today so you can know him and receive the gift of eternal life, your ticket to heaven. That's right. The Bible says to all who did receive him, Jesus, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. That is fantastic. You can become a new person born of God to start a brand new life that pleases God and of course, all God's children have a ticket to heaven. So do you want it? It is no accident you were given this offer of a ticket to heaven. God has made sure you can receive it. The whole issue is, did Jesus pay for all your sins or didn't he? God said he did. Trust God that it is so. Whoever believes in the Son of God has eternal life, John 3, 36. Just as man says, yes, I will take this woman to be my wife, God wants you to tell him, yes, I will take Jesus to be my Savior. 
I believe that he is the only way to heaven. The Bible says, the Bible says, whoever has the son, Jesus has life. First John 5, 12. If you believe that God's way to heaven is the only way, you can claim your ticket by telling God in words like these. So I'm going to leave some space, some time in between, but you can say this if you want. So repeat after me. Dear God, I have sinned. I know I have offended you in many ways. I am so sorry. I believe that Jesus suffered and died for my sins, paid my debt in full, and rose again. Jesus, I believe in you and thank you for what you've done for me. Please save me from the penalty of my sins and give me a new birth and the power to live for you. Thank you for this offer to spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So remember what John 3.36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Do you now believe in Jesus as your Savior, your only ticket to heaven? Do you have everlasting life like God said? So this is a good news track by Crossway. And if you invited Jesus to be your Savior tonight, and welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And uh, the angels are rejoicing. They just get so happy when a, believe, when a new believer comes. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, His Son. And if you want to learn more about... God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, then read God's word every day and start in Matthew and pray to God. Spend some time praying to God. Spend some time praising, like with some of these songs that I share. These are great praise songs. They are so good. This is a new one that I just found tonight. Anyway, it is time to do God's blessing for y'all and to go fix my son something to eat and get out of here. No. Oh. No. Okay. I hope that's not showing up on my video. Okay, hang on. I got some people that are talking and everything's popping up. Hey, close this. Close it. Okay, so number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And give you peace. Pure and perfect peace through Jesus. Okay. Let's pray again. I'm trying to figure out what I didn't pray for a while ago. That I need to pray for. I'm going to pray for family and friends. And boldness to go out and share God's word and the gospel. God, we just come to you and we thank you for this time that we can learn more and more about your word, God, more and more about the love that you have for us and more and more about the plans and the purposes that you have, God. I just pray for all of my friends and family, 
God, that you would protect them, that you would provide for them, and that you would bless them, that you would guide, guide them on your path, God. And uh, I pray for boldness, God boldness for going out and sharing your truths and sharing the gospel of Jesus, boldness to proclaim all things through Jesus, boldness to be the hands and feet of Jesus and to be the loving compassion of Jesus. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Pray and share, warriors. Um, have an awesome rest of your night. And an awesome tomorrow, which is Friday. And much love and cyber hugs. Well, I'll see you again. Good night.